In this short video, we're going to go over both how to use and install Grin's crafty little LIGO battery modules. So each of these modules is 36 volts and just under 100 watt hours, and they click in one to the other in order to build up larger battery packs. Here I've now combined six LIGOs to make a single 600 watt hour 36 volt battery. And those latches mechanically hold them together and connect them electronically. But you don't want to stop just at that because even though they're held together, they're not very stable and secure. It's imperative that you also flip the assembled LIGOs over and twist together the twist locks that are on the underside. This then increases the stability to have four points of secure engagement between each adjacent pair. Now Grin provides this convenient keychain key um, to do this twisting, but in a pinch you can easily use a pair of tweezers or needle nose pliers or even a slot headed screwdriver in order to rotate that if you don't have the tool handy. With those all latched together, the overall assembly is now much more rigid and behaves mechanically like a single large battery pack. When you need to disassemble this battery pack for travel or to break it apart into smaller modules for other purposes, you just invert that exact same process. Rotate each of the latches by 90 degrees until they click in their open position. And then to separate the latches at the top, simply press down on the finger points and you'll easily be able to separate the batteries back in their individual pieces. So there's two common approaches used to attach LIGO batteries to your electric bicycle, either using a soft bag or using Grin's rail and anchor system. Now, by far the simplest and most versatile is to use a bicycle bag that's not necessarily designed to hold batteries, but is of the right size and form factor to fit the number of LIGOs that you have. In this case, we have a Banjo Brothers frame bag, and the length and height of this allows us to fit up to seven LIGO modules just hanging neatly from the down tube. One of the key advantages of using a soft bag like this is that the battery is concealed inside normal bicycle hardware, so it doesn't look like an e-bike battery is present on the bike. In order to wire this up, you simply need to have a cable that terminates with an XT60 connector to match the LIGO battery, and at the other end is terminated to match your motor controller. Some people will poke holes in the bags and make a nice little cable exit grommet, uh, but more often than not, you can just take advantage of the zipper and just have the cable exit right at the end of the zip point. So when a battery's in a bag like this, if you ever want to charge the battery, most typically you just remove the battery from the bag, bring it indoors or wherever you have your charger, and you would plug in, again, an XT60 terminated 36 volt battery charger to charge the pack. If you want something a little more fixed and rigid to the frame than the bag mount, you can use Grin's rail and dock system. This is a machined aluminum rail that allows the LIGO batteries to behave like the common down tube batteries and is available for between three to six LIGOs in series. There's two ways that the dock can be attached to the frame. You can either use bolts going through existing water bottle eyelet holes or you can use hose clamps that allow you to position the rail anywhere on any of the frame tubing. Now this Santana tandem bike is a great example of the kind of platform you might install LIGOs on. This is a tandem bicycle that disassembles and fits inside a suitcase for travel and once electrified with LIGO batteries you'd then be able to travel with the complete e-bike. It's also a great example at showcasing the versatility and mounting options that are presented with the LIGO rail. So here you can see it has bottle eyelets on the down tube where you'd most typically find mounts for a water bottle, and those line up just great with the two rear holes in the rail, allowing us to fit six LIGOs just on the down tube itself. You simply remove the existing bolts that are present and then screw the rail down. There's also a large tube on the back here that could present a nice position for the batteries if you wanted to keep that triangle free. Now here there are no bottle eyelets, so this would be a good example where you would consider using the hose clamps. However, it's important to note that when you have really flat wide tubes like this, the actual geometry will cause the hose clamp to interfere with the lid of the LIGO battery pack. And so in order to successfully mount the LIGO in this situation, you can use Grin's triple bob battery anchor as an intermediary interface. This anchor can attach to the tube with hose clamps independently of the rail, and then the rail itself would just bolt down on top of it. The triple bob is also really useful if the existing eyelet holes don't quite line up where you want them to. Imagine that this down tube mount fit here, but there wasn't quite enough room at the top for the LIGO battery itself to clear the top tube of the bike, and you wanted to shimmy it down just a little bit. Well, if you instead screw our triple bob anchor down, you now have options on where the new eyelet holes will present itself, 
So mounting the triple bob back here would allow the whole LIGO rail to sit down another two to three centimeters further back and potentially that you fit that extra LIGO on the front. This bike also has mounting holes on the seat tube and there's no limit on the orientation of the LIGO rail. So you can mount it vertically like this and position six LIGOs just behind the captain seat. Uh, you could in some cases hang the LIGO rail from the top tube if you wanted to, although more commonly you'd use a soft bag for that application. And finally, in some scenarios, people have mounted the LIGOs on top of the top tube just to get even more extra capacity in there. So with the rail cleanly and securely mounted to the bike frame tubing, you now install the LIGO battery by just dropping the assembled module in place just behind the connector and slide it down. It will click in position, make contact with the docking station, and a small latch at the front of the rail will pop up, and that will hold the battery from bouncing off forwards. When you want to remove the LIGO battery, you simply need to depress this lever at the front that's holding the LIGOs there, and then slide the whole assembly forwards. You don't try to remove the LIGO batteries individually one at a time. They come on and off the rail as an assembly of all the modules together. Now in some cases, especially with six LIGOs fighting gravity like that and the friction of the connector, it can take quite a bit of force to slide the LIGO pack forwards. Um, and we provide these little divot indents on the dock so that you can get your finger behind the back of the pack to give you some assistance when you slide it. So you'll notice that there are many more spring latches on this rail than just the leading one that was holding the pack on there. And that still allows you to use smaller groups of LIGOs even though you have a larger rail available. So if, say, I wanted to just do a shorter distance trip where I only needed three LIGOs with me and didn't want to carry the extra weight of them, I can just as easily slide on a three-stack LIGO on here. And now this lower latch is what holds the battery in place. And when I want to remove it, I just depress that lower latch, slide it forwards, and take it off. So if the battery is mounted on a rail like this, you can charge it with an XT60 terminated charger at the front of the pack, but it also gives the option of using the ST3 plug standard that we have with all of our down tube batteries, allowing you to reuse the same 36 volt charger that you might already have available uh, and just plug it into the port on the base of the dock. Now you can see all six batteries are in active charging. Uh, that charge animation lets you see that they're charging, and in between showing that, you can see the current state of charge, which right now is two LEDs, or about 40%. So you may be wondering how many LIGOs should you get for your e-bike project, and that really depends on two factors. One is the range that you need, assuming each LIGO in a typical setup gives you 10 kilometers or six miles of distance. Uh, but the second important consideration is the amount of power that your e-bike system needs to draw. So each LIGO pack can safely deliver up to 10 amps of continuous current, uh, and so that means at a bare minimum you'd want two LIGO battery packs if you wanted to run a low power e-bike with a 20 amp max limit on the battery current. Uh, if you want to run a more powerful motor system like our all axle kit and get the full output capability of that hub, you generally want three or at least four LIGOs to be able to deliver that 30 to 40 amps of battery current. Of course, the more LIGOs the better, the more you can spread current over a large number of batteries, the less amount of current you have per cell, and the less stress, the better longevity you get from the pack overall. And if you want more than six LIGOs, which is the most that we have a rail for, well, there's no problem mounting them elsewhere on the bike and then connecting them in parallel with an XT60 terminal parallel connector. So I'll briefly go over some of the LED and button behavior on the LIGO modules. Uh, the pack will just put itself into a standby mode when it's not doing anything. None of the LEDs will be on. And if you just press the LED briefly, it will then illuminate and show you how charged it is. And it will continue to pulsate like that for a couple minutes before it will go back to being dark in order to preserve its own capacity. The battery will similarly start to pulsate when it's plugged into a charger or when it's actively discharging so that you know that something's going on. If you're ever in a situation where you want to store the LIGO batteries for a long length of time, that's multiple months or over winter, we really recommend that you put the LIGO module into deep sleep mode first. What this does is it disables the output and ensures that the circuitry on here stops drawing any current from the cells. That allows you to store the battery for years and years without a risk of it self-discharging to a point where it can't be recovered. You do that by pressing and holding the button for five seconds. You'll see all the LEDs turn red, and the moment they're all red, you can let go of the button, and then they'll briefly fade out into darkness, and at this point, the pack is in shutdown mode. You take the batteries out of the garage next year, and you want to wake them up, just press the button momentarily. The LEDs will initially turn blue, showing that it's in Bluetooth mode, and then fade into green in order to let you know that the pack is on, and it should come back at exactly the same charge level it was at when you put it to sleep in the first place. 
as shipped from Grin, the LIGO batteries can't be turned on and off the way a normal battery might have an on-off switch. And the reason for that is that it can be confusing with so many LIGOs together to maintain all of them being on or off at the same time. Whenever the LIGOs aren't in sleep, there's voltage on the output and they can be charged and discharged. And we're assuming that the e-bike motor controller system has its own on-off switch. Unfortunately, that's the case with almost all e-bike drives these days. Typically, the display itself will have an on-off button on the handlebar, and you don't need a switch to turn the battery itself off and on. But in some situations, you do want to take advantage of this button as its own way of turning the output off without putting it into a deep sleep mode. And that can be done by enabling on-off mode via the Bluetooth settings. So to get these batteries into Bluetooth mode, you need to press the button three times in fairly fast succession. One, two, three. And then you can see the blue wave pattern indicating that it's now broadcasting itself on Bluetooth. Once it's in Bluetooth mode, you want to open the LIGO app, which is available both on Android and iOS devices. And once you open the app with Bluetooth enabled, you should see the serial number of the battery show up as an available LIGO module to click on. Inside there, there's a tab for the BMS settings. And inside the BMS settings, there's an option that you'll see for on-off mode activated right there. So enable on-off mode, save the changes. And now there's one additional behavior of this button. We get out of Bluetooth by just tapping it once. And now if I wanted to turn the battery off, I just press and hold the button for about two seconds. All the LEDs will go red when I let go. Now the LIGO battery's off. This is different from sleep mode in that now I can still charge the battery just fine if I plug in a charger, but it also still has the same self-discharge rate of an on battery. When you want to turn the battery back on, just press and hold the button for two seconds again. The LEDs will go green, and now the output is live and is outputting a voltage. This mode is useful if you have one or two, maybe three modules, but you do have to be careful, say you have three LIGOs, that you individually turn all of them on or all of them off at the same time. There isn't the means in the current firmware to automatically synchronize the on-off behavior across all the batteries. We hope you found this short video informative. We're really proud to finally be launching the LIGO 10X battery modules in a formal sense. Certainly this is its first stage release and we see a lot of opportunities to build on this platform as time goes on. We already have ideas for enhancements to the rail design and specific modules that can go on the end of the pack to allow things like USB-C charging or fixed mechanical key locks that guarantee it can't be removed from the rail without having an extra key protection. All that stuff is downstream. Uh, we thank all of those who've supported us and who've been patiently waiting for this LIGO as it's been in development, and we're really glad to be able to get it in your hands now.